Good day Grade 8. Today we're going to look at the cash receipt journal. You would need to have your New Era Accounting textbook and your New Era Accounting exercise book. You also need a pencil, an eraser and a calculator and you need to know what source documents are. Okay, so what is a cash receipt journal? It is a book that we use to record the money that the business receives. The, C the cash receipts journal is also known as the CRJ. It shows us how the bank account is increasing. So whenever you put money into the bank, your bank balance increases. The business uses source documents to record transactions into a CRJ. They don't just use all the source documents. They need to be specific as to which source documents they're going to use. So, the source doc documents used to record entries into the cash receipts journal is a receipt. A receipt indicates that the business has received money from someone. The cash register tape. So, we used our cash register to collect cash from clients. And so, we use it as a source document for the CRJ. We would also need to look at the bank statement as a source document because money could have autom money could have been deposited into the bank by somebody and we need to pick this up on the bank statement. So this is what a CRJ looks like. On the top we have the name of the business. Then we have the name of the book that we are drawing up. So in this case, it's Cash Receipts Journal for March 2008, CRJ1, meaning it's our first Cash Receipts Journal. So that's the title of the book and the month with the year. We draw up a Cash Receipts Journal every month. Doc number, in this column, we write down the source document number. In the D column, we write down the day. In the details column, we write down the details of the transaction, who we receiving the money from or what we received the money for. Our full col column, uh, this is actually meaning folio column. This is for a reference number. We won't use it right now, but hold that thought. The next column is our analysis of receipts column. Any amount that the bu business handles, we, dip, we write into the analysis of receipts column. Amounts that the business does not handle, we do not write in the analysis of receipts. So for example, if the business has money directly deposited into our bank account, then that will not go into the analysis of receipts column. Our bank column tells us all the amounts that the business deposits into our bank account. Then we have a fee income column, and this is for services rendered. So the amounts that the business received for the services that they have rendered. So these columns, sundry accounts, these columns are for amounts that we don't have a column for. For example, we have a column for, for fee income, but we don't have a column for capital. So capital will go into the sundry accounts column. I will explain further on the next slide. So you've got your new era textbook next to you. You're going to turn to page 56. Make sure that you open your exercise book as well and you have your pencil in your hand. Yes, form twos, not your pen, your pencil. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we are going to read what the task requires. The exercise says, the transactions below were extracted from the records of Neb Salon. What are you required to do? You are required to prepare the cash receipt journal for March 20.8 that is provided in your exercise book. The documents are shown in brackets. Okay, so they were kind enough to tell us what our source documents are in brackets. So we're going to read through the transactions. Um, the date March 20.8 could mean March 2008 or it could me mean March 2018 or March 2028. For now we're going to say it's 2008. Okay. So when you're reading the exercise, you see that there are dates alongside the left-hand margin. We are going to use those dates as the date of each transaction. Okay, so what do you need to look out for when you are reading each transaction? You've got to remember that you are, a bo you are the bookkeeper of Neb's Salon. You've got to identify who the business is receiving money from. You've also got to look at what is the source document that was used to record the transaction. And you've got to check how much did you receive. The main, another main thing that you need to look out for is, did the business physically handle the cash or was it directly deposited into the bank account? That is important because you need to know whether to write it in the analysis of receipts column or not. Okay, so we're back to the cash receipts journal. So how do we enter the first transaction? Let's read it. The owner, Miss Neb, took a business loan from Optimum Bankers for 50,000 Rand. The money was transferred directly into the business bank account. The interest rate on the loan is 15.5% per annum and the source document is the bank statement. So remember on the previous slide, I told you that you've got to look out for who gave you the money. So who gave this business the money? Was it Miss Neb? Or was it Optimum Bankers? Yes, you're right. It was Optimum Bankers. So what is our source mm -hmm. document? Our source document was the ba bank statement. So we write BS in the document number column. And what date was this transaction? It was on the 3rd of March. Who gave us money? Optimum Bankers. Did we handle the cash? No, we did not. The money was directly transferred into the bank account. So in our bank column, we then write 50,000 Rand. What was this money for? Why did we receive 50,000 Rand? We received 50,000 Rand because of a mm. loan. Do we have a column for loan? No, we don't. So we go to our sundry accounts and we write 50,000 Rand and we write in what it was for. So we got 50,000 Rand as a loan from Optimum Bank. The next transaction. Miss Neb was also, well, Miss Neb also used some of her own funds as a capital contribution, issued a receipt to her for 20,000 Rand. The money was transferred directly into her bank account. Okay. So, question, what was our source document? If the money was directly deposited into our bank account, then we 
did not handle the cash and we saw our source document would be the bank statement. This transaction occurred on the 4th of March. Who gave us the money? The money was given to us by Miss Neb. We did not handle the cash, so it will not go into our analysis of receipts. Miss Neb deposited the money directly into the business's bank account. So 20,000 Rand goes into the bank account. What was it for? It was for capital. Do we have a column for capital? No, we don't. So we put it into the sundry accounts column and we write capital in the details. The next transaction is on the 6th. The total takings or service fees for the week amounted to 14,000 Rand as per the cash register roll. So our source document is the cash register tape. So we write CRT in document number. The date of the transaction was the 6th. In our details column, we are going to say what it was for. Services rendered. So we rendered services to a few customers and that's what we write in the details. Did we handle the cash? Yes, we did. It said total cash takings for the week. So we received that money in the business. It went into our cash register. Therefore, we write in 14,000 in the analysis of receipts. We then also took this money to the bank. So we're going to write 14,000 in the bank account. This is increasing our bank. What was this money for? It was for fee income. We rendered services and we received a fee for the services that we rendered. So 14,000 Rand is what the customers gave us for this week. We do not need to fill anything into the sundry accounts because we do have a fee income column. The next transaction is on the 12th. It says the total cash takings for service fees for the week amounted to 11,000 Rand as per the cash register roll. So our source document again is the cash register tape. The transaction occurred on the 12th of March. Again, it was for services rendered. This time we received 11,000 Rand. Yes, we handled the cash inside the business. Therefore, the 11,000 Rand goes into analysis of receipts. It, were, it will also go into the bank account. And it is for services rendered, which means that it is fee income. No entries are made in the sundry accounts for this transaction. On the 18th, we also received further cash takings for service fees. And this was 18,000 Rand. We entered it into our cash receipts journal and into the analysis of receipts account. Again, the business handled the cash. Therefore, it goes into analysis of receipts. The business also deposited the 18,000 Rand into the bank. And we indicate what it was for. Fee income. No entries are made in the sundry accounts. You now have three transactions left. I want you to do those on your own. Yes, you can. I know you can. Once you've completed the rest of the transactions on your own, I want you to add up the bank column. So you're going to add all the amounts going down in the bank column. Then write in your total in the last row. 
You're going to do the same for fee income and also the sundry accounts. Do not add up the analysis of receipts column. Once you've added, once you've added those three columns up, I want you to then cross add. You're going to take the total amount of your sundry accounts column and you're going to add it to your fee income column. It should equal the bank account amount of 123,380. If it does, good job. If it does not, go back and check where you've made a mistake. You have to do these two activities for next week. It is the cash receipts journal of task 4.4 and 4.5. Complete in your new era exercise book. Happy learning.